Welcome to the Mike on Much podcast. I'm your host, Mike Vierman. We're here with our friend and trusted producer, Max Kerman, as well as our pop culture aficionado, Shane Cunningham, and intern Erica, who has a fancy mic stand. We'll take a video of this and put it on our Instagram, but she showed up, and it's like, you know, some people, would, like, what's the Beyonce thing? You bring hot sauce to the, the bar or something? Yeah, hot sauce in my bag. There you go. Mm-hmm. You showed up with, like, a mini microphone stand. So Max, Shane, and I are, are doing handhelds, <laughs> yet you pulled out this mini microphone stand, and it's now sitting It's a real try-hard move, I gotta say. No, my hands are always busy, mostly mm. fixing your levels, Max. <laughs> 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 So I, it's a hard to hold my mic and talk and contribute, so expect to hear a lot more of my voice. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, so it was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was a move that not only made you seem keen, but you're actually going to be able to speak up more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, use the hands. Yep. You just took a drink of Perrier. I did. It's, you're it's you're it's doing great. it all. She holds her, her can with two hands, though, by the way, like a little baby. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's a big can. <laughs> yeah. It was, she had one hand, yeah. Oh, there you go. He's taking a photo. <laughs> so Max will post this photo on the Mike on Much Instagram. Also, before we get started, guys, shout out, Shane and I met a fan up from South Carolina today. Whoa! Came and met us at 299 Queen. She was in town just to see Arkells play at Budweiser Stage. That's awesome. I went and grabbed some lunch, and I got a call from Shane around noon. I'm like, okay, Shane's calling me. Uh, and sometimes when Shane calls me during the day, it's because he forgot his uh, security card to get back into the building. Okay. Our building has actually pretty strict security now, so... That's the only reason I've ever called you. Yeah, yeah. seriously. When I get a call on my phone during the day, it's because Shane's like, hey, uh, Mike, are you at your desk? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, I, I forgot my cart and I have to go down and let him in. This was not the case today. He said, hey, are you around? I said, yes, yes, I am around. I'm just around the corner getting lunch. He's like, I'm out front with a fan. Her name was? Caitlin. Caitlin. And she's here. She bought a hat. She bought a t-shirt. Damn. I came wow. up, said hi. We talked for a good 20 minutes outside of 209. South Carolina. Wow. South Carolina. Is she driving home or flying? Flying. Wow. She's been staying at a hostel. She, she like walked us through her Toronto experience. She, she, had had an amazing, she had an amazing time. That's awesome. She said, she, she said, oh, she got great weather. She told us what the weather was in Fahrenheit. I said, I don't understand that. <laughs> I only understand Celsius. So I couldn't do the conversion. She was like, and then it was 72. I'm like, I have no idea what she's talking about. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so she was great. So I wanted to give her a big shout yeah, out. She knows you. She's uh, been to your smaller shows in uh, the States. She said yeah. she went to a show in Atlanta. Oh, wow. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, we, we've never played in South Carolina, so she must have either driven up to North Carolina or down to Atlanta. Yep, she yep. just had her set the Atlanta show. Cool. And uh, yeah, so anyway, shout out to her, and I'm glad she came by. And so I think that's kind of, if you're in the Toronto area, and even if you don't want to buy some merch, you want to come by 299 and say hi to Shane and I. Shoot us, shoot us a DM. We're around. Simple as that. We're friendly guys. Yep. Uh, Bring us uh, coffee, whatever. Yeah, and shout outs <laughs> to uh, Shane, because Shane is, is the guy that will usually actually respond, and he's on that stuff. Yeah, but it's weird because normally when we go down, uh, I always say, Mike, you want to come down with me? Yeah. But the, the last three times we've done it, the people haven't wanted to talk to us. It's like a friend of the fan or something. Picking up something. So it's always uh, kind of awkward because <laughs> yeah, we roll yeah. in expecting to take a photo and they're like, no, no, I don't care. I'm just going to take the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so this time I didn't do that. And I'm like, oh, this is going to be quick. And right now I'm like, like, I don't feel good, but I don't feel bad bad right now i kind of feel like i'm not even alive after this bachelor party <laughs> so i'm like i really i really wasn't in a chatty mood but i ended up talking to caitlin for almost an hour <laughs> an hour <laughs> and she wasn't really a shaniac she was just she she was more of a i i found like a mike or max type person <laughs> type of person and then by the end she's like uh could you call mike and then I was like, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and and then I called Mike, and then uh, we went through over all the stuff that she talked to with me with with Mike there, and it's just, and I'm fine with that. It's just that I'm just in such like an unpersonable mood today. So yeah, <laughs> but you was, still managed to yeah get was, an hour conversation with someone. That's yeah, like, and amazing. it was just like it was. I could tell she's like, oh, Shane sucks at talking, so it was like very <laughs> awkward. <laughs> So, all right, so let's get into it. Yeah, so okay, so first of all, the reason Shane's not feeling so good is because uh, a lot went on this weekend, dear listeners. Uh, not only uh, did Max and the boys in our Kells play a huge, huge show that has now gone viral uh, for reasons we will get into later uh, at the Budweiser stage. How many people go to a Budweiser? It was sold Six, out. 16,000. 16,000 people yeah. were there going crazy with the towels. Yeah, the is whole. that uh, hyperbole or has it gone viral? It kind of has. Oh, amazing. Yeah. 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 Future report. 
Yeah. Bleacher Report, baby. Everything. Yeah. So anyway, That's we'll get into that in a second. Uh, what crushed us is like as things were being planned over the last few months, we realized that this date actually fell on the weekend uh, that Shane and myself and a bunch of other Champagne Boys were going to be at beloved Champagne Boy, uh, AJ Sanchez's uh, bachelor party. Um, because he said, the only thing I want to do for my bachelor party because I'm getting married is I want to go to the NBA draft in Brooklyn, New York. Obviously, a bunch of us are huge NBA fans. So I'm like, this is like a bachelor party dream. I cannot wait for this. I'm looking forward to this more than our trip to Miami, more than a trip to Cuba, like all these sort of fun things that we've been able to do. I was probably looking forward to this the most. Then we realized, oh my God, the Arkells booked their huge Bud Stage show on the exact same Why weekend. were you looking forward to it the most? Just because uh, since you have a kid, you don't get out as much or just because you like the the draft? 100% NBA draft. Right? I just felt like it was going to be a unique experience. Like we've been so mm-hmm. fortunate to like, I know what it's like to go to a beach and hang out on a bachelor party. I know what it's like to, you know what I mean? Do all these different sort of things that we've experienced, but I've never been to an NBA draft. So it was for me just a bucket list thing. And I, New York's your favorite place in the world. New York is my favorite city in the yeah. entire world. It's true. Um, I just love the energy in, in, in New York. So anyway, I was just like, this is something that I would do anyway. Oh my God, I get to do it as part of a bachelor trip with all my friends. This is going to be very, very exciting. Max, what were you thinking when you realized these dates weren't going to work I out was so you? bummed out. Um, obviously, there's no way around it. Our our kind of local show is, is kind of that third weekend in June, but also bachelor parties, you know, probably once in a lifetime thing for our friend AJ. Also, the NBA draft only happens once a year. I love the idea of the thing, and it would have been right up my alley. I love New York. I love NBA. I love all of you guys. So I was very, very bummed that it happened to fall on the same weekend. But on the brighter side, I didn't have to worry about his uh, guest list as much as I normally do. Yeah, you <laughs> lost about what, like oh, 10 champagne boys was, and their I, I, wives. I, I, I put girl. in like six names. It was so easy. <laughs> Um, yeah, so a couple things. So we'll just go go a bit through the bachelor trip, which was exactly what you'd expect. Uh, uh, we booked this like sort of amazing Airbnb that slept like 15 people in Brooklyn. It had like two full apartment lofts. Like it was a very cool Airbnb. Didn't you think, Shaney Boy? I thought it was, yeah. Yeah, it was wicked. So before we even leave, though, the morning of the trip, the Thursday when we're supposed to get on a plane. So me and Shane, a couple of our friends, we're all booked on flights out of uh, Pearson. Uh, we all start getting notifications that our flights have been delayed. So we're like, this is weird. Okay, this is crazy because we're on a timeline. We're flying in on Thursday. The draft is literally, we have to be, so the nut. Big shout out to the nut because I know we like to joke. What are you laughing at, Erica? You're giggling over there. <laughs> all right. Shout out to you. <laughs> well, you got the mic if you want, if you want to. Uh, so, so. We, we all, we all, you know, you guys, people like to make jokes, but I'll say in moments like this, this is where the nut comes through. He had sorted it out. He said, guys, I've talked to my friend. She works for the NBA. She says, if we get there for 520 to Barclays Center in Brooklyn, we will get to go onto the floor, walk through and get a photo on the stage at the NBA draft. We're like, holy shit, this is amazing. Especially amazing for our friend AJ, who's the guy getting married. He loves the NBA. He literally has grown up obsessed with it. He owns like 10 Tracy McGrady jerseys, all that stuff. So I couldn't be happier for a guy like him. What happens in the morning, though, is all these flights start getting delayed. And then they all start getting canceled. Then they all start getting pushed. I got a, friend, a call from our friend Peak. He's like, yo, they just canceled my flight. Like, what, what's going on? What's the plan, guys? Half the dudes drove. A bunch of us were flying. So there was this massive scramble like at like 10 a.m. where we're all trying to figure out what we're going to do. Are we even going to get to, to Brooklyn for 520 to walk across the stage? Uh, they try to push our flights to 8.20 at night. So that means we not only we missed the stage, we'd mm. missed the draft. We've already like paid for our tickets and all this stuff. So it was just real ner- nerve-wracking, and, and we were just trying to figure out what the hell to do. The nut cancels his flight at Pearson. He's like, dudes, he's like, I got a flight out uh, 12.10 out of Porter, which is the one, if you're not from here, right downtown in Toronto. Uh, but it goes to New Jersey. He's like, get on that one if you can. We're like, man, that's going to cost a little bit extra money. But this draft experience was such a unique thing that a bunch of us moved our flights. Up. So everybody, everybody dropped their flight from Pearson and just went over to Porter. Uh, a group of us: wow. me, Shaney, AJ, Ian, uh, their buddies Kyle and Dan. And, and when Mike called me, he said it'll literally be double the price or add six hundred to it. Yeah. Jeez, wow! You guys are good friends. So it and Danica was like my travel agent because I was basically trying to <laughs> I was trying to cancel the Pearson flights. Uh-huh. Find out if Shane wanted to pull the trigger on mm-hmm. this because we could have waited till eight thirty, got into New York, still partied with all of our yeah. friends, uh, but we would have missed all the draft. And so I was like, "What are you thinking?" And could we cut that part out for the wives? 
<laughs> is that a joke or do you want to no, ask? I'm just kidding. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, because this is exactly how the conversation went. I'm on the phone with Shane. It's like 10 a.m. I'm like, so here's the deal. I'm like, we can get into Porter, but it is going to cost us uh, $600 more each. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I go, so lo- yo, I'm like, let's just like, we can, like our flight's been pushed to 830. We'll miss the draft, but we'll still have a good time. What do you think? He's like, well. I don't know. I like, he's like, when you start doing, and he starts trying to do all this complicated math to justify spending the money. <laughs> and so immediately, like, I know I've known Shane forever. He's one of my best friends. I'm like, oh my God, he, he wants to do this. If he's already justifying, because I gave him the out. Oh, wow. And so he was, because I was kind of leaning more toward whatever. And, uh, and then he goes, no, okay, let's, let's, let's pull the trigger. Cause you know, we'll never think like, we'll experience last forever. I go, okay, I'm, I'm a hundred percent. in. Um, I'm like, we'll just, we'll work out the math. He's like, yeah, it's a hundred percent. He's like, we'll never forget it. It'll be great. And we can just never tell Alex. (laughs) 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 But I knew the info was going to leak to her through the other like 16 girlfriends. Like, you know, there's always a weasel. (laughs) 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 Because then I noticed on her Instagram, she started posting weird, like, uh, things like, oh, uh, I'm uh, hey everybody, uh, I'm looking for a uh, tropical vacation. <laughs> this is what Alex started doing. Yeah, she started posting it, and she's and then she started like emailing a bunch of like countries and stuff like Jamaica and <laughs> or, like emailing? resorts, not countries, <laughs> okay. like resorts in Jamaica. <laughs> And then uh, all of a sudden she's making promises online like, all right, guys, we're going to make a YouTube video and do all this. So now I might have to like produ- go on a vacation and produce all this like influencer content while I'm there <laughs> just so we can get a free trip because I spent too much money so on the bachelor the money party. money back somehow. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but Alex wasn't happy at all. Oh, my God. Aren't you – so uh, the whole time you're telling me this, I'm just – Aren't you so happy that your brother Greg wasn't in this situation? Because he would have hated that. He drove down. Because there was a car full of dudes. Greg has a reputation. Uh, yeah, I'm not wanting to spend the dough. Oh, this would have drove him I, nuts. I've been starting to get to know Greg. I've never seen this side of Greg. Uh, yeah. Let me just wow. say. Well, you've only known Greg as like when Greg's like a professional. Boss making, Greg. Boss Greg making pretty decent coin. The Greg that we know, like he working at like a Rogers like cell phone thing in the mall, <laughs> making like less than like a living wage, basically. So well, everyone would be. Have you ever been at a table with him and they do the thing where you have eight or more and the automatic tip comes at eighteen <laughs> percent? I don't think so. No, oh. he doesn't like that. <laughs> <laughs> he hates tipping. <laughs> well, you know, he, I'm sure he's fine at tipping, but I think be, he, but he hates told, being forced to do anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Stubborn. But when anyway. it's mandatory, he's not happy. So, so anyway, he drove down with a bunch of our friends, Dan Hamilton, Johnny Doss, all these guys. So they kind of they were like, in some ways, probably feeling very superior. Like, oh, all these guys lost their. Friends. And by the way, so a couple of our friends took the late flights because I don't think they were going to the draft anyway. Uh, they ended up everything got canceled. Like they they ended up not making the trip, which was heartbreaking. Why yeah. was it? So weather? shout out to uh, Peak and Felix, uh, fallen, cause soldiers. fallen soldiers, yeah. man, because we felt really bad for those guys. It was weather related though, wasn't it? Yeah, there was something problem on the ground because we were originally flying to Lagardia, so we ended up going to New Jersey. Anyway, man, this thing about air travel, especially on a trip to New York, you were always like. Nine times out of ten, you're like, oh, the flight was totally worth it because it is a long trip. It's like ten hours, and after hour six, you're like, okay, I'm kind of sick of this road trip kind of thing. Yeah, why didn't I just pay the two hundred fifty bucks to to fly? But the one time it you run into bad weather like that, you're like, oh, this is it all a, fell in the place yeah. for them. And, and and I will say it didn't end up costing us six hundred more each. It was less. Danica got it cut in half because she mm-hmm. did some like travel agent shit and found us an earlier flight out. Uh, so shouts to her and. Um, yeah, maybe let that, let that be known if, if your wife is angry. Yeah, thank you, shade. Danico. You know, no, no, we kill her on Danico, this pod, but... but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, the, the, once we get to the Porter, flight's still delayed. So there was a lot of stress about whether we were going to get to Barclays on time. And we were with the nut. Like I said, he was on our flight. We were in his uh, in the, uh, the cab with him. And he was trying to get a hold of his person at the NBA. But of course, the NBA draft is like about to happen in like an hour and a half. It's like 6 o'clock now because we didn't get there for the 520. And he's like holding out. He's like, we're not... And we're in like the VIP line. Like all of the players' families are like lining up. They're in suits. They're all done up. They're dressed to the nines. And like our tickets, because you, what you do is you buy the, the tickets that are like up in the Cheap nosebleed ones, yeah. exactly and then you have your vip experience and then go back up to your seats and just you know drink and have a laugh uh so they were like no 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 you guys need to go to another part or whatever and the nut refused he was like i'm waiting this is my friend she said we're gonna have this so he held out even though like the other 10 guys were like maybe we should just go to our seats at this point because we've been standing out there for a while and this isn't a testament this is what i was trying to get at earlier with him is he stuck with it and then she eventually came out you know once all of her duties were done she like walks us through this crazy vip thing we're seeing all these like uh these people that 
like if you're into the NBA, it's cool. Like Woj was there. David Jacoby. I got a photo with David Jacoby. Oh, crazy. Yeah, I was like, do you mind doing a photo with my friend? He's getting married. And then he's like, who let you guys back here? Like he was very personable and funny. Um, we go in there, Zion Williamson, who was drafted number one. He's literally like 10 feet away at wow. the table with his family. They walk us through. All the players are just sitting there waiting for the draft. They just watch these 10 Canadian dudes, these bros, <laughs> walk onto the stage. They have a professional photographer. <laughs> the stage where they're about to walk on. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, we've done nothing to earn it. Like yeah. I've never trained a Did you see life. Zion looking at us? I did, I know I was too busy looking at the camera. Did you yeah. look at Zion? Like, no, I was just wondering if you did. No. no. So he was like he was like five feet over. I watched him and I filmed him. I got some footage of him as we were like kind of walking on the stage. But then once we were actually up on the stage, I was taking in like the arena. I was looking into like the you know the the the, the sort of three hundreds like the no. It's you know when you're on stage, Max. I don't know if you have much experience with this. <laughs> uh, and you look out at like a, a huge crowd of people in arena. It's just it's pretty cool. So it was like. I was just taking in the more scene more so than looking at all the soon to be NBA players that were sitting right in front of us. Is it like a like, three quarter bowl or full bowl? They or? did half, half bowl. Okay, cool. half bowl. Yeah, nice. um, it was interesting, it, but it was it ended up being this amazing experience. Uh, and, and shouts to the nut for uh, for pulling that off. Man, I wanted to be there so badly, and we were uh, playing a festival in Dover, Delaware on the Thursday and Friday. And Dan was texting me uh, while this was all happening. He's like, "You should come," and I. There was a moment where I was like, I'm going to go because uh, I, I called Budget, the rental place in Dover, Delaware, because we were playing at like four o'clock and it took it was going to be like a three hour drive to get to New York. And I was like, this would be the best surprise ever. And Nick and Mike and our band, who's also pals with all you, uh, they were interested in doing it as well. But then I was like, you know, there's something a little dicey here. Like if I do this and oh, also all the weather was like thunderstorms. Uh, like from Dover, Delaware, all the way to New York City. So I was like, we're going to be driving on the interstate through a thunderstorm. I'm going to get to Brooklyn. The surprise will be amazing and, oh, and that worth the trip. It, it would have been the best. But then I'm like, okay, I'm going to drink 17 beers and eat two large pizzas <laughs> and then and then have to drive back another three hours. So it would be six hours in transportation, play a show, and then the next day is Bud State. So I was like, you know what? If there's ever a night just to like – get a good night's sleep now's the now's the night because if i if something bad had happened or something it wouldn't have been worth it, it you yeah. would have been too stressed the whole yeah time. i would have been too stressed the whole time but but i i really wanted to but anyway so carry on it, it, it was great it was great and uh yeah that was sort of the highlight but i just felt like it was it was a really well-planned bachelor trip you know there was we did this whole shuffleboard thing uh in brooklyn there was like a boozy lunch planned like it seemed like everything we went to was like open bar like you like we paid for the experiences but it was like there was never just like oh i think i'm just gonna have one it's like no everybody throws in the money into the pile and then so you almost feel like you have to have five drinks to replace to justify what you've spent to go to yeah <laughs> you know that whole deal but uh it was it was it was uh it was amazing and it was a great hang and all that stuff and yeah it was really cool shane how did it feel because i feel like you you know you haven't been out of the house for like four straight days non-dad husband duties so how is that for you it was awesome. It was like the best partying ever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was the best days of my life. Yeah, but I lo- I lost my fun guy shirt. Oh, and oh. it was a gift that uh, that Alex- you got on Father's Day. Yeah, yeah. yeah Alex it- actually texted me asking what size my fun guy shirt was, so she knew what size to buy for you. Oh, really? Are we yeah. the same size? We no. Well, did she give you a medium? Uh, yeah, yeah. I got a large. I'm like my large. It kind of fits a little big. So whatever. He and she's like, oh, he's been doing push-ups. He'll want a medium. Oh, show nice. Off, show off his body. Man, that's flattering. Yeah. That's cool. Um, but I wrote a little list of stuff we did because I, I wasn't sure if we were going to tell a story. But Yeah, go for it. I was, I was going to say, to though. To recap you, the trip, I wasn't sure. But it, you, if you can just do it. Oh, no. I, I was going to say that your fun guy shirt was a big hit in, in New York City. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was very cool. Like, everyone commented on it when uh, I walked by. I'd be like, fun guy, I see you there. Yeah. I got mine coming in the mail. Uh, <laughs> that was awesome. cool. Yeah, it was awesome walking around. And then the guy who said that to me, he ended up being like a big announcer guy. Oh. Like, he was on, like, the Jumbotron doing shit. Okay. You probably would know his was, name. I think it was Dennis Scott. I think. Is he a black guy? Yeah, yeah, D3. Did uh, Birchall or did the Nut wear a fun guy shirt? No, he wore his uh, championship shirt. Is that oh, I, I lent him my fun guy shirt for the trip. Did he ever wear it at all? No. No, I don't think Weird. so. He wore a championship shirt, and he wore that exclusive OVO championship mm. hat that he has that oh, yeah, yeah. everybody was like complimenting on that I'm very jealous of. Mm. Uh, yeah, no, I don't know. Do the rundown if you got like a point form. Shane's got a book here. Yeah, it's not super interesting. I just thought I didn't feel like talking today, so I would just read. Off yeah, re- yeah read, read your notes. <laughs> okay, we went on stage draft night. Uh, (laughs) that's number one Uh, that's the first night Uh, we got free drinks from uh, these women at a Jack Daniels thing at the draft we didn't end up oh in Barclays Center yeah yeah because the the women like loved love and they loved that a guy was getting married 
Okay. So they would just do free pours because uh, I had heard that they wouldn't do free pours at Barclays, but that was a lie. America, you can do whatever you want. In they did. Uh, we Liberty, got baby. a ton of free drinks, which was awesome. <laughs> For our listeners, Shane has his sunglasses on. You look kind of hungover still. <laughs> well, I don't. It's, here's the thing. I honestly, I don't feel. I never felt hungover the entire trip, but I never felt good when I wasn't drunk. And I <laughs> and I feel that way now. It's like I don't feel like I'm alive right now. It's a very surreal feeling. Okay. It's kind of trippy. Uh, oh, in the morning uh, after the first night after the Barclay Center, we had kind of like a group therapy session in the morning, which I thought was kind of cool. Everyone just kind of talked about their feelings and emotions. Do you remember that, Mikey? No, I started. Drinking it like no, you were running it. You were like the leader in it. <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> you don't remember? Well, no, I just need it a reminder. Was it was oh, four days. It was of like drinking. we were talking to Ian and everything about. Oh, like- sorry. Yes. No, I 100 percent know what you're talking about because I thought because you know what else we did that morning? We were out on the balcony and then AJ came out and danced in his underwear. I put it on my Instagram. Yeah. You're what you're talking about is when there was like six of us sitting around in like the the bed area. Yeah. Absolutely, I remember that. Yeah, that was amazing. It was me, you, uh, not Ian, uh, AJ. It was a it was a great it was a, it was a really good talk. And I know when we talk on these like you know it's like oh these guys literally it's just like a bunch of bros drinking. If you had sat and listened to that conversation for like an hour and a half two hours it was like bunch yeah. of new dads people yeah. getting married life's changing it was like that yeah, yeah. and we just kind of got deep on like you know you know what what we expect out of life what we have now what makes us happy what, you know what we do for, it, but it was like those moments exist on these trips more so than just stuffing your face with like max said two pizzas and 17 beers yeah. Uh, and then I have AJ dance in his underwear wearing a jersey, which you, 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 you talked about. Mike, Thanks, yeah. Mike. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> then we went to a uh, Papa Shot place. Oh, or I a saw bar that, that on had Papa Shot. And a lot of people were talking shit like AJ was going to be better than me. <laughs> but he was not. I beat. I, he got 71 points and I got 89 points. Nice. Wow. But no one really cared, though. I was like, guys, I beat him. They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so no one gave a shit. You, Shane, yeah. Yeah, it's not your bachelor trip. Yeah, at that point, we were all feeling pretty good. And I started uh, telling everyone how I had the longest arms. <laughs> and then a lot of people didn't believe me. And then I did pretty much have the longest arms, except for Sean Dawson. Oh. But what we started doing is playing the Who's Got Longer Arms competition with just random people. In New York. Oh, that's a great Which bit. I realized people actually love the game. <laughs> like, I just I just went up to this guy because he was 6'5". He was walking. Like, he was very attractive. Like, he looked like a model or something. He was with his, like, European girlfriend. Just like, hey, can we play the whose arms are longer game? <laughs> and he had a coffee. He goes, okay. And he goes, hold my coffee. <laughs> and he just hold his arms out. And my arms were longer than him. And wow. this guy was 6'5". I don't was, feel so bad anymore after you call yeah. me T-Rex. Yeah. It was pretty much. <laughs> Dude, that that actually kind of got to me. I was like, I asked the manager, Ash, I was like, do I have short arms? Yeah, I, know. I can tell because anytime you don't laugh, I can tell you're actually offended. <laughs> Not offended. I was just like, is this a new point of insecurity Insecure for me? Insecure about yeah. it. Yeah, it was like Trump having the small hands. Yeah. Oh, gr- we played the top five game. That was a very popular game on the trip. It's like, who's the top five funniest? Who would you want to bring oh, out course. and all that? Oh, by the way, I heard a story about at the draft night. You guys ran into like the twelfth man on the Brooklyn Nets, and yeah. AJ had a who's long, who's whose arms are longer competition with that guy, hundred percent. And this guy, I, <laughs> I, I, it was I a rec- professional basketball. Player. So I recognize him because in one of the four or three games we played against Brooklyn this year, he actually lit us up. He, he's Who a Brooklyn rookie. I, he's a Euro guy. I can't remember. Okay. His, it, uh, Corvitz. Uh, anyway, Whatever. I recognize him. He was there with his beautiful girlfriend. I go, yo, AJ, because AJ obviously he's like me. He like knows you know the rosters, the deep deep cuts. I was like, yo, that's that Nets rookie. Oh man, I, it's killing me. I'm not remember his name right now. But anyway, I go, if you want to go say hi, AJ goes up to him and like AJ is nice and properly drunk. It's his bachelor trip as he should be, and he tries to. Do and AJ is very thing. disarming too. Like yes. in social situations, like I, the first time we really ever met AJ was in the middle of Hess Village, and we had like a friend of a friend that knew him, and he was very sweet and really. Everybody's sort of drawn to him immediately, especially in that setting. So I can see him winning over an NBA I player. find him the opposite, actually. He's very <laughs> insulting to everyone. Really? <laughs> yeah, and I Maybe find people he... very put off by him. Really? Yeah. He's not like Julian. I find Julian everyone loves. But, Mike, you've been in situations where he's approached someone, like an NBA player, to get a photo. And the guy just ended up walking away from him. Yeah, we went to a Raptors oh, game huh. this year. And... Uh, and he took a photo of Jamal Mag- Jamal McGlure, who's like our assistant coach. And uh, I was like, Jamal, do you mind getting a photo with my friend here? And he's like, yeah, yeah, okay, quick. As he was walking through the concourse and AJ goes up to Jamal McGlure and AJ just looks up and he goes, you're fucking huge. <laughs> and then Jamal McGlure just goes, okay. And I took the photo quick and then Jamal McGlure just walked away. <laughs> and this guy hated AJ too. Okay, at first. Everybody. At first, but then, yeah. Once he realized party. it was his bachelor party, that guy, the rookie and his girlfriend both went, oh. Mm. And then they were, they were cool with him. And he does have a habit of telling everyone they look terrible. You look terrible. Keep your glasses on, Shane. Really? Yeah. 
Okay. Oh, there they are. <laughs> I'm showing Max a photo right yeah, now. Yeah, this is great. We're going to use this for yeah, Instagram. We'll, we'll post it yeah. on Instagram. But anyway, uh, so good times. Carry on. Uh, yeah, well, it's almost done. Yep. Uh, so then uh, the next day, we I put on my uh, swim shorts because I had an idea that I was going to try to be an alpha male and start <laughs> a pool party. Oh. And I wanted to see if I could actually get it going just to challenge myself. Uh-huh. And, Put uh, yourself out there, you know? Yeah, it's like on the Crave show, uh, I talked about how I, oh, sometimes I pretend I'm an extrovert to yeah. see what happens. <laughs> no one listened to me. Everyone ignored me. <laughs> so I was just w- ended up wearing, uh, what are they called? Swimming trunks all day. You all the bars. light blue swimming trunks to all the bars as we did this crawl. And it was funny because just kept putting, we had like a Brooklyn group for everyone for text and, and all that. He just kept putting the group uh, to the nut. He goes, uh, Virtual, find us a rooftop pool party, $15 a guy, all you can drink. <laughs> <laughs> just impossible asks like in Brooklyn or in Manhattan. But then I whispered in Dan's ear and he, he is the alpha male getting the party going. And he was actually, I think, working on it a little mm. bit. Didn't end up happening. Uh, <laughs> then we drank all day, yada, yada, yada. They threw me in an Uber or someone. And then, uh, but they took me to the wrong place and because there's apparently there's two 435 broad views mm. in New York, one's in Manhattan and one's in Brooklyn. Yeah. So I went to the Manhattan one. This is like when Mike Veerman in Miami, Miami went to not the like the Marriott in Miami Beach where we were staying, yep. but in Miami proper. Yeah, it was ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. yeah so I got very scared. <laughs> and my phone was at 1%. Of course and I was. called Ian and I said, I need you to help me. He goes, come to 435 Broadview. I go, I am here. He goes, you're not. I'm here. And I go, <laughs> I am here. And then I sent him a picture that I was here. And then he heard a siren going by. And he was like, that's when I knew Shane was fucked because we couldn't hear a siren uh, on our end. Wow, that's very attentive wow. of him. Yeah. And uh, then Good my job. phone died. And now oh. I'm exactly like Kevin in that movie. <laughs> Home Alone 2 lost in New York. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> So I caught the reference. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know what to do, and I'm very scared. And at four in the morning, it's not like business guys are up getting work. Anyone out there is doing CD weird stuff. And I was like, luckily there was. He's a like, s- luckily I fit right in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the guy's got swim trunks on. He's one of us. <laughs> one of us. Let's get out of here, T-Bone. I'm like, look at those swim trunks. <laughs> He's crazy. <laughs> And then I, I, I went to a, uh, a sub shop and charged my phone, but I had to eat a full foot long sub. <laughs> I suppose I could have got a six inch, but I was hungry. <laughs> it worked out. And then uh, my phone got to 17% charge and then I got the Uber and made it back. Oh, good. But then in the morning I wasn't feeling good. I was in a bit of a rush and I forgot my fun guy shirt. Mm. Now Alex is very furious with me. Damn. Yeah, how long do you think it will take for her to forgive you for the fun guy shirt? Well, she she demanded that I give her the link to the Airbnb, so now she's going to get it shipped back. Oh, that's so, good. Yeah. Yeah. Well. well, good luck with the fun guy shirt, and uh, yeah. But that's that's the the. But BK was a party success. In the nutshell. Well, I wish I was there. BK was a huge, huge, huge uh, success. So you know. Looking forward to the wedding now. We'll all be at the wedding, Max. You don't have some big show that you have to do. Yeah, I do have a big. You're show. You're fucking kidding. Yeah, it sucks. Oh man! Yeah, I know, I know, I know. It sucks, man. Well, Shane will have a good time at that yeah. wedding. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but that segues us. Yes, not very smoothly, but no. uh, the NBA was involved. Yeah, uh, you had this massive show with our Kells. Yeah, uh, word started to trickle in t- uh, to the camp. My brother let me know Thursday night. He told you? Yeah. Oh fuck you, Greg. Why? What's wrong? <laughs> Because I was so excited for the surprise. I told, so... But how is that a surprise for me if I'm not no, at your show? No, because I wanted you to see it on, on the internet and then get excited about it. Like, I, okay. Let's. I feel like everyone knew the whole trip. I feel like I've known for a, over a week. Okay, well, let's rewind. So what we're talking about is this Nick Nurse. Hold on. You know what? Let's cut that. I don't want to get my brother in trouble. No, it's for, no this is awesome. No, now my brother's going to be in trouble. He's going to be pissed at me because I didn't tell anybody on the trip. But I kept how did you know? I, I just knew. I, Greg must have told me. <laughs> this is awesome. This is staying I didn't tell, for sure. Greg told this me. Greg told sure. me, and I didn't tell anybody. But then I thought after it was revealed, I was able to share with you that I knew. What do you care if I know on a Thursday if I'm not going to be at the well, show okay, on a Saturday? Okay, well, okay, we're, we're keeping all this all for right. sure. Oh, he's so, going to be pissed at me. No, now. that's fine. That's fine. Okay, and okay. So basically, what happens is um, months ago, I'll, uh, if you're listening and you're curious about how Nick Nurse ended up joining us on stage, this is how it happened. 
Very uh, okay. A, let's. There might be people listening to this that. So for our listeners, Nick yeah. Nurse, who's the head coach of the world champion Toronto Raptors uh, on Saturday night in Toronto, basketball team in the NBA, <laughs> <laughs> got up on stage with R. Kelly to perform a song. Nick went famously viral online because during the playoffs there were photos of him getting off the the, the private team jet with the guitar on his back. I might have joked about it on this pod, <laughs> saying he looked like he was on tour with the fucking Eagles. I think after it <laughs> loss in particular, I was like, I'm tired of this Nick Nurse stuff. Yeah, you're not. Happy happy with him but but i'm a crazy raptors fan yeah, yeah. Do you know what i mean it's like now i think he's a genius i'm so glad he's our coach yeah the internet had a great time with him like he, there would be photos of him and masai walking down a hallway having a very serious conversation but he'd have his guitar on his back <laughs> yeah and, then, and like someone would like quote him and be like well masai what i'm thinking is today is gonna be the day <laughs> <laughs> so um so anyway, months ago, though, the nut reached out saying, hey, uh, Nick's assistant, uh, Jenny, is, is looking uh, to help him get a piano in his office. Do you have any ideas about how we can figure that out for him? I said, oh, actually, you know, we know the people at Roland because they've uh, partnered up with our band over the years. And so I shot a note to our dude, Lyle. Lyle ends up getting Nick a piano for his office. And Jeannie's super, Jenny's super happy. And uh, she sends me a note thanking me for, for connecting the dots. No problem. That's months ago. So after the Raptors win, I want to say it's the – what day was the parade? Monday? Monday, yeah. I think on – We could go today. We could go to today. On the Saturday, I just shoot her a note saying, first of all, amazing, congrats. Like, we're so happy. This is the best ever. Second, we have a show in a week uh, at Budweiser stage. And if Nick wants to play guitar, we'd love to have him out. And we're also doing this Motown medley. So, like, if that's something that's appealing to him, let me know. She gets right back and says, like, oh, my God. This is so generous of you to offer this this thing to Nick. Let me ask him. And this is like, you know, the parades the next day. Like, everything is happening for anybody involved in the Toronto Raptors. But I think on Monday, Tuesday, she gets back. She says, Nick is blown away. Thank you so much. I want to – I'll read you the email just because it was uh, very, very sweet. She goes – Thank you. It's been incredible. What a generous offer. Nick is going to be blown away. I'll discuss with him as early as tomorrow. Can you provide a few details? Will there be a rehearsal? What time will, will, does he need to be there? I'm like, oh my God, this is crazy. This could actually happen. This could happen. And then she, hey, Max, I spoke with Nick and he's, he's super excited to do this. He's hoping you're able to send him the music so he can practice and, re- and include a version from rehearsal. I was like, sweet. And then this is great. Uh, confirming what time he should be there on Saturday. I'll be joining him. There's going to be a car service. Like anyway, So I was like, this is crazy. But there's still a big part of me that thought it's gonna fall apart like i was talking with Mandra ash like on like even when we were getting these emails i was like there's like an 80 percent chance that he's gonna have to like go to la to recruit Kawhi, or he's gonna you know he's a coaching team canada basketball yeah he's gonna, he's gonna have to go travel somewhere for a scouting assignment like there's a very good chance it's not gonna happen so i didn't want to get my hopes too high um and i only told uh your brother and dan and yeah, I, we get it, Max. Your inner circle. No, no, no. What I wanted was I wanted everybody on the bachelor trip who I assumed was going to be like real loose and in a great mood on a Saturday night in Brooklyn to see it on Instagram and they go, like, what the hell? It would be like a really cool surprise. I guess everybody. After 17 beers, there are Seriously, no secrets. People are so scared. Oh, my God. It's because like, you know what? Because I asked. Oh, I thought you were going to. Like, I, would, do you think people were engaged on that level? Like with like social media? Like, I think they would have. Um, right, right. But this is so funny because uh, because you knew, Shane, is what you're yeah. telling me. You knew. The nut, uh, I was talking to him yesterday after. I was like, you didn't know this was happening, right? He's like, yeah, yeah, I knew. I was like, how did you know? Anyway, so it turns out, Greg and Dan. I think multiple people told me. I had even gotten it in my drunken mind that you had told me. <laughs> So I, I was telling everyone too. I was like, guess what Maxi Boy told me? <laughs> I definitely did not. Because I didn't even tell the, like – People in the like the band knew, but like our horn section, nobody knew. So basically, what happens is on uh, Saturday, it's at two o'clock. As we have also, a- thank you for trying to preserve a nice moment for everyone on the bachelor trip, where we all would have went nuts. Ooh, that is a nice. I, yeah, way I to wanted think to because I thought it'd be like really exciting. So um, we uh, so Saturday afternoon rolls around. We're in Toronto. It's two o'clock. We have like a very tight sound check. Nick's coming for three fifteen. So I gather, and we have a six piece horn section, three singers. So it's a big band. So everyone gather around. Here, here's what we're going to be doing in uh, sound check today. This, this, and this. But also, there's something really special. But it's super important that like it stays in the circle for now. And so no Instagramming or anything. But the head coach of the Toronto Raptors, Nick Nurse, is going to be showing up, and he's going to do science. He'll live with us. And it was cool because in the band, there's a lot of Raptors fans, like in the extended band. Yeah. So everyone's like, "Are you fucking kidding? Like this is awesome." So then, like an hour passes, we're running through the show. 
Nick Nurse and his assistant Jenny, they show up and he's like kind of standing in the pit and he's just like looking. He's got this red shirt on, his baseball hat, cool, cool guy sunglasses. And, he, and he's singing along. We're playing Jackson 5 and he's like singing along to that. We're, we're playing Temptations. He's singing along to that. So I'm getting all giddy. He comes up on stage. And the thing which, which really struck me is that, you know, as a, as a fan of basketball and the NBA, Nick Nurse, his persona, and he's a relatively new personality, is he's sort of quirky, right? And he, he has like, you know, he's a 50-year-old white dude standing next to like six foot eight, like chiseled young athletes all the time. So it's like compared to them, he doesn't look as like physically as impressing, uh, impressive, right? Uh, and and also it's like I he doesn't necessarily have that like navy guy disposition or like you know like you yeah know, no he's from Iowa he's like easy go, lucky go easy go lucky guy he's like no it's it's so you know even in his, his press conferences and all that stuff he's got a very sort of laid back demeanor yeah and he, and, he, and he there's a vulnerability about him which is kind of interesting but anyway he comes on the stage and you recognize no wait a second this isn't a guy who you have to go oh there's the poor little Nick Nurse sort of you know. He's like, this guy has swag. Like, he's first of all, he's like six foot two. He's also like Jack. Like, dude, totally works out still. And he's also a world champion. So he's just like, and he's a professional at greeting people because how many public appearances does he generally have to do as like a coach? Well, I noticed he went for the handshake and you went for the hug. Oh, oh, maybe. Yeah. Oh, did he? I did he? But um, he... So he's he's clearly like kind of at ease with people, and I was like, oh yeah, this is just a kind of a funny moment where I was like, oh yeah, no, of course, to get a job as a head coach in the NBA, you have to be charismatic, you have to be confident in yourself, and uh, it, it was it, it didn't really strike me until that moment because he's clearly been working at it for a very like long time, <laughs> <laughs> and he has one of thirty jobs, and now he's an NBA championship champion. So uh, we run the song with him, sound check. What's the conversation like though before you do the rehearsal? Is it just like, is he like, hey, like, I'm, I'm a fan, or are you like, I'm a fan? Like, oh, yeah, it's well, all it, small it, talk, it, what's it like? It wasn't, it didn't, we didn't get much, much time to talk in, uh, at Soundcheck. We talked after the show a little bit more. But I, I was oh, basically like, hey, like, because we were on such a tight schedule and we just kind of wanted to get him in and out. Was the rehearsal day of? Day of. Got you. Yeah. So uh, I was like, thanks so much for doing this. It's going to be great. Like, you know, we're all such big fans. Like, and everybody was kind of shaking his hand and he was very gracious. And we run, run the tune, and uh, I just try to reassure him. I was like, you know, the most important thing is you look like you're having fun. We got this great band. It's like he's like, I'm a world champion. Yeah, I'll, I'll be fine. Yeah, don't worry about it, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the uh, so anyway, so we're all feeling good about Soundcheck. And um, was uh, he any good though? Like, did yeah, you notice he, he, early yeah, right, on? He, he's, he's played piano for 20 years, but he only picked up the guitar in the last couple of years. Uh, but for playing rhythm guitar, like the stuff that I'd play, he could totally hold it down. Like it was totally just what we needed. So I was thinking, what's the best way to introduce Nick Nurse at the show? And I was like, what would be like kind of a fun, clever, sort of funny way to do it? So I came up with, I w- I'd normally call you Mike, but I didn't want to ruin this fucking surprise. So oh, I, didn't I would call love you. to workshop that with no. you, buddy. So basically I said, um, this was in the middle of our Motown set because we were doing like a 30-minute soul review in the middle of our show. And I said, all right, uh, we have a special guest here. Um, some would say he's Canada's hottest guitar player. You know, everywhere he goes, he's got a gig bag on his shoulder. And I think at that moment, people started to kind of piece it together. I was like, ladies and gentlemen. Wait, you said he's got a what on his shoulder? A gig bag. That's Ooh. like, oh, that's what he carries. Oh, he's got a guitar in. on his shoulder. I yeah. forget exactly oh, okay, how he yeah. phrased it. That's better than a uh, gig bag. I wouldn't have known what you were talking Maybe about. Maybe I said guitar. He's a guitar on his shoulder. <laughs> okay. I don't remember. But basically, it was like. <laughs> One guy in the crowd. What's a gig bag? <laughs> 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 they give it up for Nick Nurse. And honestly, it was the loudest applause of the night. It was insanity uh, he comes out he he's like waving to everybody the song goes wicked and it really like defined the night there's so many awesome little moments throughout the show but far and away this this nick nurse thing was uh like blew everything else sort of out of the water and it was just a, a really good reminder of like how transcendent sports is you know what i mean like yeah and um so after the show we get a photo with him up uh in our dressing room uh, we we start talking and it's so funny. So um, I, I'm telling him how how big of a basketball fan I am. And I say, you know, when I was a kid, I was you know obsessed with the Raptors. And for a school project, I interviewed Glenn Grunwald. And he's like, you know, Glenn. 
And Glenn Grunwald was the general manager of the Toronto Raptors in the Vince era. And I interviewed him for a school project when I was in grade eight. I probably told this story on this pod before. Um, and he said, Glenn's the reason why I'm even in Canada. Because when I was coaching in Manchester, like in 2000, he like let me come hang out with the team in the off season. And he was the person who sort of introduced me to Toronto. And now Glenn's my boss because I'm coaching Team Canada. And Glenn is the president of Team Canada. Yeah. So I pull up the photo of me and Glenn. I, I'm, this is in the year 2000. I'm like 14 years old. And he's like blown away by this. And I said, another thing is like... Uh, my grade two teacher is the uncle of Jamal McGlure. And when I was like in grade four, he told me my son's going to be a big, my my nephew is going to be a big star. And of course now Jamal McGlure after playing 12 years in the NBA is a bench coach for the Toronto Raptors. So we had this like, right, this really nice little moment. But it, I just thought it was so funny that these things that I did or these things that happened to me when I was a kid ended up being a real like point of connection for this yeah. other mm-hmm. ridiculous thing that just happened to me as a 32 year old. Yeah. I was like, Oh, it's so funny how like precocious little max did something in <laughs> 2000. And now Nick nurse probably feels a little more connected to me or, or has a better sense of who I am through that story. Absolutely. So it was, so it was really cool. He, he brought us uh, this, the shirt. Yeah, Max is wearing the Sweet Championship the shirt Sweet right Championship now. Yeah. shirt. And just as he's leaving, and we gave him an Arkell's touring band uh, jacket. I noticed he wore that on stage. He wore that on stage. And Class he's like, move. Yeah, so, yeah, so he looked wicked. He said, hey, I want to give you something. And he gives me one of four wow. ever produced. Okay, That's you've insane. been wearing this. Is that one of the four? Yeah, he said, I want you to have this. That's so what I told there's you. No, but I said, there's, I said, now that he's won a championship, they've probably gone I, into production. No, I, he said, I, I thought he, you were kidding because no. I, I didn't think that would ever no, happen. No, I know, of course, the story hat. that they only made him four custom hats. Yeah, he said his brother designed it for him and Nike whipped him up. Yeah, mm. so when I saw you wearing it on social media recently, yeah. I was like, oh, Nike clearly just printed a bunch more now that he's a champ. I mean, oh, maybe, maybe. That's what I think I actually happens. thought that was a pretty good joke because no. I was like, oh, he's got one of four. Of course you print a couple more of them. You tell me this is one of the four. I guarantee uh, you it is. And unless, unless you see a bunch of other people wearing the Nick Nurse has, hats in the next couple weeks, he, he said he said to me, this is one of four hats. Oh, oh my God. God. Yeah. Yo, that's amazing. And by the way, I'm not much of like a, a memorabilia kind of guy. Like there's a lot of like Arkell's like cool mementos over the years. I don't know where they are. I don't care. But I was like, this is the coolest thing that I that I own. Oh, I would cherish that with yeah. everything. Yeah. It's awesome. So th- that was like, holy well, shit. Like you said, sort of this fascinating sort of journey where it's like there's this photo of you as this little kid with Glenn, Glenn Gwanwall when you're in grade 8 because you do this interview because you're obsessed with the Raptors and now years later your band's playing this sold out show it's this huge moment and the coach of the championship the world championship Toronto Raptors hands you an exclusive hat one of only four yeah it's insane man yeah. you're on you're in a wave right now yeah so uh, yeah so that was wicked and then um we uh, what's the hang light after? You said you hung out after, or was it just backstage? So, he, so, this, so that was the hang after. So, like, so, did he hang out at the after party? No, we were. He, he was getting out of there, but like, it was it was kind of nice actually because the after thing was in the Amex lounge, and there's like every friend and family member there. It's like pretty packed. Open bar. Yeah, uh, no, not open bar. Are you kidding? Arkells aren't paying for that. Um, <laughs> and um, so, but it was nice because it was just kind of like the band in the dressing room, and then we had a moment. There's actually kind of a nice photo that Ashley snapped. Of, like we're just kind of on this like little balcony area. Um, so to go to the after party, Nick goes home, go to the after party, seeing a bunch of family, friends, really nice. A bunch of uh, NHL dudes were there. Um, Taylor Hall, uh, Darnell Nurse, uh, Luke Gadzik was in the house, saw them. And it, everyone's just like generally in a, in a really good mood. But this actually this funny thing happened. Um, not to name drop, but uh, Mark McMorris and Craig McMorris, the, the snowboard Olympian boarders, dudes. Yeah, yeah, they came with Tessa Virtue and her, and her sister to the show. And so... I wanted to say hi to them, but I was like, oh, where'd you guys go? Because I hadn't even seen them yet. And it was just, at this point, it's like 1.30 in the morning. Everybody's kind of clearing out of the Amex lounge. And they're like, oh, we're at the gates. We're at like a uh, will call gates. I was like, okay, I'll be there and give me two minutes. So I go over there, say goodbye, give them a hug. They get in the cab. I go back in to, to you know, the facility and the security guard's like, you, you can't come back in here. This is, uh, <laughs> no, everyone's, everyone's got to go home. And I say uh no, no I, we just played uh he's like i don't care no one's coming back in and then i was like um and i pull up my phone i'm like here's a picture from tonight like here i am on stage he's like don't care people doctor photos all the time <laughs> you said that? Yeah. yeah and and then and then Were you so, wearing the nick nurse hat no, no oh, you pulled that out <laughs> right this way sir yeah. red carpet <laughs> and that's then, one of only four yeah, yeah. and then he and then people start streaming out and they're like oh my is that matt Max, can we get a photo? Oh my god! I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah let's do a photo. 
and right in front of the security guard. And then they're like, what are you doing out here? I'm like, oh, this, this guy's a pretty tough as a security guard. And they're like, to the security guard, like, dude, he's the reason why we're all here right now. Let him back in. The guy's like, nope, no one's getting back Whoa. in. <laughs> and wow. then, like, the nuts uh, colleague D comes in and she works there. Love D, yeah. Yeah. She's in there and she's like, Max, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm trying to get back in the venue. She, and, and she's like, you got to let this guy back in the venue. Like, I work here. Yell at me. And the guy's like, nope, no one's going back <laughs> in. <laughs> it, ba- it basically was an SNL skit eventually because everybody who came out either wanted a photo with me or was like vouching Let on my behalf. In. And the guy was not happy. Did you start liking it out there because all of the attention? <laughs> well, I, I liked it in that like it was it was an SNL skit. Yeah. I was like every time another person without, doubt, without without fail, every single time somebody asked for a photo. And I was, and the guy like wasn't budging. It was awesome. So how does it resolve? So then eventually, I should have thought of this like 15 minutes earlier. Another one of the Nuts colleagues sees me. He goes, "Just come with me." And there's this another side entrance where like the bus pulls in, literally 15 feet over, uh, with no security guard. Or no, there was a security guard who recognized me. Go, oh yeah, go on in. Mm-hmm. So that's how mm-hmm. I got result. But I thought, yeah, I thought that, was that guy wanted to go home. Yeah, he did. Not getting back Damn. in. Uh, it's funny though. It's like, you know how many people would have been an absolute nightmare to that guy like th- like you uh, yeah. you handled it in a way that seems very kind of like like at no point did you did you want to say do you know who i am no uh, yeah no not, not really I, I, I usually i cause usually like to think that you can reason with somebody right. this guy was just particularly hard-headed yeah, but you know how many people were like got on a phone and been like i'm calling your boss man like yeah you're holding me up blah blah, blah and you just kind of just hung out yeah just hung out it was like literally 10 minutes out there it was really funny <laughs> <laughs> i have a serious nick nurse question yeah though. So let's say in the the next morning you wake up, you get an email, and it's an invoice for ten thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do, seriously? Well, honestly, the amount of so the internet has uh, you know we talked about something going viral at the top of the show, but like the this moment was like the CBC national like moment of the weekend. Uh, Huffington Post picked it up. Um, it was on the NBA Reddit page, which made me very very happy because <laughs> I go to that page all the time. Um, the Toronto Sun just like the Athletic did a piece about it like Bleacher e- Report Bleacher Report said, did it yeah. so it would have been worth every penny so you would have paid it uh, I guess so right. but I mean oh other funny thing that happened was uh, I did the thing just <laughs> just as Nick was about to leave I was like hey give me your number oh <laughs> Max <laughs> you always do this did he give it to you yeah, hell yeah bro that's awesome <laughs> let's text him <laughs> Ask him if it's one of four or not. Call him. Call him right now. <laughs> Is this at one of four? No, but uh, he he was so sweet. Um, you now have Nick's number. Yeah. But he has yours. What if he's like, hey, Max, uh, I don't know what you're doing right now, but do you want to come over and jam? I would love that. Are you kidding me? Would you really? Yeah, but he, he was super nice. Shot him text the next day. I'm like, yeah, that was the best thing. He's like, thank you. That was the best time of my life. That was good. Yeah, you are amazing. Okay. Did you ask him at all if he thinks Kawhi's staying? Nope. Didn't bring that That's up. the right play. Yeah, of course. That's the right play. Yeah. Uh, well, but yeah, but I did ask him about Team Canada and he's like, cause he's coaching the guys and he had a couple, he was like, yeah, I think we got it. Like basically everybody, like everyone's going to be playing for us this year. Like RJ maybe, but we'll see. And he's talking about meeting Wiggins for the first time. Cause he was like, I never met Wiggins, but I knew I, I might be coaching the team this summer and we were playing in Minnesota. So I asked him after the game, Hey, can I come hang out with you for a bit? And I got to meet him and like some of his family. And yeah, so it was cool. Like that basketball chatter, like is something I feel good about in that context yeah. where you're like, I, like, let's get into it. This, I'm not just some, some fair weather fan. Yeah, man, yeah. man, that is magical. Yeah. I, I, I mean, yeah. It, crushing that. I didn't get to see it just cause that moment would have been so beautiful and brilliant. If we had been in town and we were going to your show, would you have told us? Mm-hmm. I know. I, I kind of want, this is what like, yeah. I didn't tell my dad, like I didn't, there's a bunch of people there who, who had no clue it was going to happen. Would your dad, had your dad? Oh, they were like, that was amazing. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. That's so awesome. Yeah. Do you think it ever gets old for your parents to see you in that setting? Uh, not really, because it's like you know, once a year, once or twice a year. Um, do and they, like, do they you, bring all their friends? No, nah, show I think you it was off the two of them. Bit. Actually, it's funny. My mom, I gave her a shout. I could see her. We had a catwalk, and which kind of went to the end of the pit. And my mom was in like in the second row of the seats, like dead center. And my mom was retiring as a high school teacher this week. So at the end, in my heart, so it was yours. I said, like, special shout out to my mom. She's retiring as a high school teacher. And I kind of pointed at her, and she was—I think she was kind of tearing up a bit, which is kind of sweet. But the thing about my mom at these shows is she wears these <laughs> the headphones. These headphones. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and like you know when like babies go to shows and they have yeah. to protect yeah. their ears. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my mom does that, like as, she, as if she's like a construction worker or something. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, and so everybody could kind of see her. 
And so, like, after the show, I was actually I was talking to Tessa. She's like, oh, so nice to see, to see what you did for your mom. I was like, oh, did you see her there? She's like, was she the one with the headphones? <laughs> 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 but she was like, my mom, don't, don't give a fuck. It's all good. Um, a few people uh, uh, messaged me on Instagram, which I saw sort of Saturday night as we were all out drunk and drinking and sort of been, had been going since Thursday, so you're a little emotional, but people were saying that when you did Proud Mary. Yeah, we gave, dedicated uh, to, to Roy Veerman. Roy Veerman, you gave uh, our dad a shout out, which was really nice. And so a bunch of people like that were at the show like listeners of the pod, friends, people, they all sort of DM. It was, it was the song video. right after the Nick Nurse song. And I was like, this one goes out to the loving memory of our guy from Hamilton, Ontario, Roy Veerman. Nah. We did Ron, Ron who, who got a bigger applause, Roy or Roy, or Roy got a good one. Oh, that's yeah. good. Uh, that was nice. Thanks, yeah. man. I mean, yeah, I wish, I wish we were at the show. Just tough timing. Yeah. yeah. There'll be another one. But that's the fun thing about like, um, about these events where it's like, if you, Ash and I talk about this all the time. It's like, yeah, if you kind of just keep your ear to the ground, you're like, ah, there might be like something that's happening in the culture that we can be like included in. And this Nick Nurse thing was like the coolest thing. Oh, the other best fucking part about it was, th- so the next day all this like news is rolling in about people covering the thing. The Raptors end up Instagramming the Nick Nurse moment, right? Did yeah. You, did you see this? Of course. And did you see who commented on it? No. Oh, this is the best. Spicy Pete. Whoa, yeah. Pascal Siakam. Yeah, so basically the, uh, he, uh, the Raptors are like, uh, what, what, the, the caption is, live your best life, coach, via Arkell's music. And then, uh, yeah, Spicy P goes, he does like the smile, like the laughing with the tears. tears? Going, that boy living. <laughs> <laughs> Spicy's at the uh, NBA Awards tonight up for most improved players. That's right. So he's in LA. That, I'd love to follow his account. So there's something also very satisfying, like Drake follows the Raptors, right? Like, oh, yeah. you know, all the Raptors mm-hmm. follow the Raptors. You know, like Drake will have seen that moment yeah. 100%. Which, which makes me very happy. Yeah. <laughs> Man, you know, it's funny, too, when you say, like, oh, you know, we keep our, our sort of ear to the ground. If there's a cultural moment, it might be nice that we can sort of connect. What I think makes it more special is how organic it is to you. Sure. You're ne- like, if the Leafs had won the Stanley Cup, Mike Babcock gets on stage and does that. Still a cool moment. Yeah. But I feel like it doesn't mean as much to you. Oh, this is the pinnacle. Do you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So it's this organic sort of authentic thing that... that becomes this beautiful moment yeah. when Greg uh, did tell me in secret uh, you're going to ruin the relationship between no, Greg and I fine. thought it's it was just a don't let it out before it no, happens no it's all good it's all good uh, and by the way that's when it comes to but the reason why I'm not mad is when it comes to secrets like this is such a like frivolous secret where it's like of course if it was a meaningful thing then obviously I might be more pissed off. But this is just like, oh, this would be a fun little thing. If, Which I love the way yeah. you're looking at it because because most people it's like, a, oh, don't let it leak secret. That's what I thought the whole it's a secret thing. But yours was I'm trying to preserve this experience oh, for my friends in I just Brooklyn. wanted you guys in Brooklyn to be like, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, I was like, I, I wasn't seething with jealousy. I was just, I had the weight of sort of... Uh, uh, FOMO. I was uh, like, yeah. I can't believe I'm not going to be there to see this moment where fucking Nick Nurse walks out on stage. Yeah. Well, you know what? Our video crew, Corey and company, they, they nailed it. They man. nailed it. I they thought it was a great a cut. Job. Awesome yeah. shots. Even you. Actually, there's a moment in that video where I, it's like you're you're like, is he side stage? Is he side stage? It looks like you kind of wait until you see him at side stage before you bring him on. Just in the event that like, did some, I read that right? Oh, you totally did. I knew it because I didn't like in the. Two percent chance that he was like, you know, I don't want to fucking do this, like, because that, that could happen. Like, he's never played a show before. It's like yeah. maybe like got cold feet, whatever. I just want to know that he was there. Yeah, yeah. There's just that little hesitation, and then I can see that it's I like can see his like feet coming out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How'd you pick this song? Um, I figured it was sort of like um, sort of thematically, it was the science you'll deliver. I'm yours. Championship, cool. baby. Championship. And also, it's like kind of the most like rock and roll song we have in the Motown set. Right. It's like it's kind of, there's a kind of a thrashy part at the end, which would be fun to jam out on. That, that, that's how I went with that one. Did you rehearse the catwalk thing um, with him? Because he went out on the catwalk. Uh, I, I haven't watched the full like I four didn't, minutes I yet. didn't re- uh, rehearse that, but I said, let's do like in the moment. I was like, Nick, come with me. And he just came with me. I love and, that. But we did rehearse a little thing in soundcheck when we all got up on the stairs for those shots at the very end of the song, and and he and he nailed that. He knew exactly where to go for that one. Did you see gourmet spuds joke? No, what did, oh no. He goes, he goes, he goes, he goes. Uh, he's like, coach's guitar wasn't plugged in, but it's <laughs> <laughs> because, it's because it's a wireless pack. Wireless it was your pack. guitar. Yeah, it's so my it's guitar. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, but, but commenter said that. Oh yeah, well those guys don't know how the biz works. Come nah, on, man. Um, the other funny thing uh, was uh, our buddy, former uh, pod guest Blake Murphy. He said, I'm totally, he texted me after. He's like, holy shit, this is the coolest. I'm going to ask Nick about, about this at the press conference on yeah. Monday because he was uh, being announced as Team Canada's basketball coach. And did, did you see the excerpt? 
Of course, yeah. you sent it. I, I loved it. Yeah, it, it was. It was. Uh, Do you I want just to read this. Yeah, for can the you podcast? Read it? Yeah, yeah. yeah, so uh, Max sent this thing. So obviously, uh, Blake has access, and I, that's awesome that Blake told you he was going to ask yeah. about it. Um, and uh, so Max sent this excerpt from Blake's questions to uh, Nick Nurse. Uh, so he asked him about the experience, and this is Nick Nurse's quote. It was a tremendous amount of fun, especially when it was over, but I was pretty nervous, to be honest with you. That was a big crowd. I was doing a lot of pacing their side stage, <laughs> which kind of supports what we were talking about. You didn't see him. As it was coming up. But he, Max, was great. He was a good coach. They had a little dress change right before they started the little Motown bit. He came back on, and he put his arm around me. And gave me a great raw raw speech to calm me down and tell me what to do when I got there. It was tremendous. It was a thrill. It really was. So you're coaching the coach. I'm coaching the coach. That's how you got the hat, baby. <laughs> yeah. When I read that quote, I was like, oh man, that's high, that's high praise. And um, but you know, I was thinking um, we did at the Junos a couple of years ago, summer '69. It was sort of this ensemble. Th- so- ensemble thing with Brian Adams and a bunch of other Canadian talent and Brian Adams gathered everybody around because everyone's kind of nervous to, to sing Summer 69 with Brian Adams on stage even though it's like Alessia Carr is there and Jim Cuddy or whoever else was on stage but I remember Brian Adams going hey guys the most important thing is you have fun mm-hmm. you can't screw it up and he really put everybody at ease when he said that I was like that is such a good like leadership move yeah so that's basically what I told him I was like just have a good time you can't screw it up it'll be great yeah <laughs> Mike on Much can be found on Twitter and Instagram at Mike on Much. You can subscribe to the show on any platform that has podcasts, uh, Spotify. Do it.